All right, so let's talk about one of the most common misdiagnoses that technicians get or confusions that they have about uh, restrictions. A common thing the techs believe is that if you have a liquid line restriction, say a clogged liquid line filter dryer or maybe a metering device that's over metering, meaning it's not allowing enough flow through it, it's restricted, or maybe even a service valve that's you know not open all the way, for example. They think that you're going to have higher head pressure. And the idea, they think that, okay, well, this refrigerant is going to come into the compressor, it's going to back up against this restriction, and that's going to cause high head pressure in the condenser. But if you look here at this uh, refrigerant diagnostic quick sheet that I've made, it shows you right here that your suction pressure will be low. That's sort of the defining characteristic. One of the first things that techs always look for is low suction pressure. And your head pressure is actually going to be normal to low. So what's going on there? They think, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. There's no reason that you're, if you have a restriction here and you're measuring here on the liquid line, why on earth would your pressure here be lower than normal? And it comes down to a very simple principle. Uh, two things, uh, two analogies that I'll give. The first is tank of refrigerant has maybe 25 pounds of refrigerant in it, say an R410A tank, 25 pounds of refrigerant in it, which could charge, you know, two to three residential air conditioning systems. And yet the pressure inside that tank is not high. It, it's static pressure based on the, uh, you know, saturation chart. We know that because there's liquid and vapor present in there. Well, why isn't it high? You have all that refrigerant in there. Wouldn't you think it would be high? Well, the reason why it's not high is because it has achieved stability with the outdoor air temperature. And so something having a lot of refrigerant in it, by its very nature, doesn't cause high head pressure. But you say, okay, well, I understand that. But you have this compressor that's sitting there pumping away, and it's forcing in against this restriction. Wouldn't that cause the pressure to be high? But the thing that you got to know is, is that a compressor, it's pulling from somewhere in order to pump out. So if you're not moving refrigerant and therefore a you know, significant amount of heat down the suction line, then you don't have the refrigerant density doing, going into the compressor. Then you're also not going to have as much refrigerant going out of the compressor which is why sometimes when you have a restriction, you'll see the air head pressure go up for a little bit and then it will slowly kind of dive down along with the suction pressure. And that's what happens when the system essentially pumps down. That's the second analogy. If you've worked in air conditioning, we've all pumped down the system. That's shutting off the liquid line here at the outlet of the condenser. You have systems that are designed to pump down both air conditioning and refrigeration. And what happens is you shut off the liquid line or king valve and then the refrigerant pumps into, pumps down into that receiver or condenser, and then it will often, you know, shut off on a low pressure switch. And that's actually how it's turned on and off. That strategy has been used forever. And obviously, if it was bad for the system to pump down, well, they wouldn't have had systems that pump down all the time. In fact, it's actually a good thing for the system to pump down because that helps prevent refrigerant migration into the compressor crankcase. So it's actually a good thing. Now, we have to give a caveat here. There are some condensers that are not designed to pump down. Um, today, we have a lot of microchannel condensers, and they have smaller internal volume, and they're not designed to hold necessarily the entire system charge. And so you need to make sure don't, don't pump down a microchannel condenser unless you know you should. Sometimes the condenser can't hold the refrigerant charge. It can be held in the receiver. And so depending on where the restriction is, that can affect it. But we're talking about you know, typical situations in residential. And so we're going to read this note right here. And it goes along with this liquid line restriction, this little star here. It says restriction effect on head pressure varies with the exact location of the restriction, especially if you have a receiver. System refrigerant capacity, meaning how much refrigerant the system can hold, presence of a receiver, and whether the charge is correct. And I mentioned whether the charge is correct because in a lot of cases, uh, you'll have a restriction that's coupled with overcharge. So let's say we have a, a liquid line dryer that's restricted. Technician shows up. He sees that the head pressure is low, the suction pressure is low, and he says, well, I know if the head and suction pressure is low, I'm low on charge. By golly, grab my tank out, start jacking the refrigerant in it. Well, eventually, the head pressure is going to go up because as you fill this condenser more and more and more, the volume decreases to the point that you will start to get hydrostatic pressure and that will start to build up. You'll get, you'll get hydro lock because you have so much liquid inside that condenser. And so then you can really have some high pressures, which is a real problem. And so restrictions may show high head with short runtime or on systems with very small condensers or on systems that have been overcharged in addition to the restriction, like I mentioned. In general, restrictions are in the liquid line and will result in low head after sufficient runtime. So your most common restrictions that exist out there, liquid line dryers, um, those can be either inside of a condensing unit or outside of a condensing unit. They can either be by the air handler or uh, by the condenser in typical residential applications. Uh, or metering devices, screen, inlet screens on metering devices that have clogged up and they're not allowing enough refrigerant through. Maybe a uh, bulb that's lost its charge and so the power head isn't opening the valve the way it's supposed to. Those are some common causes of restrictions, maybe even a kinked liquid line on occasion. It's very rare that you see restrictions in either of these other three lines and really the expansion line is very rarely even a line except on ductless systems. Your suction line very rarely has a restriction in it unless it has a suction line dryer and your discharge line almost never 
never has a restriction in it. Although I have seen it when somebody brazes in a compressor and they leave a bunch of boogers in the compressor and that restricts the, the flow through the compressor. And that can definitely cause high head pressure for sure. At that point, again, it's all a matter of where you're measuring your pressure. So we're, we're measuring them here at the outlet of the condenser at the liquid light service port. That's where we're typically measuring our pressures on a residential system. Rubber meets the road. Why does it do this? Very simple. What happens is when you have a restriction, not as much refrigerant can come through the evaporator and back. So your refrigerant density decreases. There's less for your compressor to pump and there's less heat being added to the system. Because my favorite name for an evaporator, if you think of it simply, you know, we, we call them evaporators and condensers, but I think a better way to think about an evaporator is a heat absorber. Your evaporator is there to absorb heat and your condenser is a heat rejector. Compressor is your pressure increaser and metering device is your pressure dropper. So that's what they do. So you have an evaporator that's your heat absorber. Well, if you don't have as much refrigerant going into your heat absorber, then you're not absorbing as much heat. And that means you're not bringing as much heat back to the compressor. And if you're not bringing as much heat back to the compressor, then you don't have as much heat going into the condenser. If you don't have as much heat going into the condenser, then there's less heat to reject. And therefore, you don't have high head pressure. Most common causes of high head pressure are going to be high load overcharge. So cases where you're bringing more refrigerant back to that compressor, more heat back to the compressor, or if the condenser isn't allowed to reject the heat. So dirty condensers are a real common one that causes high head pressure. If you've ever noticed, if you have low load, say you have a dirty evaporator coil, you're gonna notice that your head pressure is actually very low. And that's because you don't have as much heat coming back to the compressor, the refrigerant density is lower, and so you don't have as much heat to reject in the condenser. Causes of high head, there's lots of causes of high head, most commonly you know, dirty condensers, anything that causes uh, you don't you don't have as much heat rejection um, off of your off of your heat rejection unit here, known as your condenser, or you have high load, you have more heat coming back in, or you have overcharge. But liquid line restrictions very very rarely cause high head. They can cause it for a short period of time as this refrigerant kind of makes its way back through. But eventually, what's going to happen is this low side is going to be starved, and when that's starved, then the pressure is going to drop because you just don't have as much refrigerant or heat coming back in the first place. Hopefully, you found that helpful. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.